Hey everyone, this is Josh Maker and uh, Dan Keenan again here with another ball review. We're actually going to shoot a couple here today. So the first one's going to be for the Attention Star S2. So if anyone paid attention in the bowling scene over the last uh, eight months or a year, um, they've seen that the Attention Star was kind of a, a tour favorite uh, for our SPI guys this past tour season. So we were kind of anticipating a, a really similar to this coming out soon. Um, so the first one was a pearl version. This one uh, is going to feature the E-Trax um, Plus Hybrid. So it's going to be a little bit stronger, a little bit earlier of a color, cover formulation. It's also finished uh, at a 2000 grit finish, uh, whereas the first one came with uh, the polish. So kind of like our typical reviews here, we're going to start a little bit further right. Um, it's going to be tough to be super far right here because there's so much friction outside of this house shot. Um, and then kind of migrate left and we'll throw the original Attention Star in it as well. Um, and this is a fresh uh, house shot on lane 16 here. So I actually had a chance to throw this in league on Monday here uh, at the other end pair on one and two. And it allowed me to stay uh, kind of in the funnel the entire night. I had one open and shot 770. So I like what I see out of this ball so far. So we'll see if we can string a couple together here for you guys. That's kind of where I lived uh, with this ball pretty much the entirety of Monday night, just kind of in that funnel there. And it allowed me to stay there the whole night and just kind of adjust the pan position and speed a little bit and stayed in the pocket pretty easily. All right, so I haven't really thrown mine uh, much yet. I threw a little bit last night on the burn. Um, probably was a little too strong. So we'll start here on the fresh and See what it does. I'd say Dan's got probably a little bit fresher service on his. I've had about four games worth of lane shine built up on mine. I um, actually did just make a comment to him here right when we started where I feel like the service on this has actually held up pretty well compared to some of the other um, sanded finishes that I've had out of box from SPI. Um, so this has got four games worth of pulling on it, and it still definitely has a little bit of texture left. So I'm just going to go ahead and stay in the same spot and try to get one more good shot off here and, and start inching left. Ooh. Ugh, slipped a little bit there, but that direction was pretty close to that first one. As you can see, that one went through the pins pretty well again. All right, so as Josh said, I mean, one of the first things we I've noticed um, in this cover stock is, like he said, it looks like it's going to hold up a little bit more. Uh, some recent releases we've noticed, uh, you know, after a game or two, uh, even after changing surfaces, the covers were shining up very, very quickly, um, which isn't a bad thing. It just makes them hook more than off the spot sometimes than you want. All right, I'm going to go a little left here. So... Initial impression is this ball, so I did mine five by five by three, which is uh, pretty much my standard pin above the bridge, uh, center of the grip, everything straight up and down. Uh, one of the things I've noticed comparatively is it's gonna be a little more forward off the spot, a little quicker uh, to go forward, which is very good. So for me, it should place it between an XL and the original attention star, which is my goal. And I went a little different direction with my layout on mine. So I was a not the biggest fan of the original Attention Star, but the way I drilled it, same as my UFO alert, um, it was a little bit taller pin. So it was five inch from my axis and a little bit short of a buffer. So for me, it kind of stood up early and went forward. 
Uh, I didn't want to have that issue with this one, knowing it was going to be a little bit stronger recovered. Um, so I actually lowered the pin a little bit on this one, went a little bit stronger with the placement, a little bit longer with the buffer. Um, so it actually makes it, I would say a little bit earlier, but uh, more continuous downline. So it's not going to want to hook and stop as easily. And I've already noticed that um, just as far as how continuous it's been from going straight. So I'm going to go ahead and move two, two left here. We'll go two left and one with the eyes. How the ship? I got that one a little, going a little bit further right than I wanted to, and a little forward with my hand, so I kind of wiggled there. Um, so I make sure I dial the speed down a little bit on the next shot. All right, I'm not going to move off my last shot because I got to round it a little bit. So I'm going to stand in the same spot, see if I can just make a little better shot. Just trying to get it to go around the three six right now. There we go. All right. I'm go to the same spot as that last one, just dial the speed back a little bit and give it a little bit more time. Um, like I said, this is a fresh house shot here, and there is quite a bit of volume in the middle part of the lane. Um, so for me, when I was starting on Monday, I was three and two further right. And then where I ended um, on Monday after the three games of five, man, I was still further right than I am right now. That was pretty good. Um, not quite sure what the adjuster would be off of that one. I think I threw that one about as good as I'm gonna gonna throw one now. So I might end up just bumping back right and kind of get back in that funnel where I only missed a handful of times on Monday here. Bump just a little bit here and see if I can open it up. Oh, slowed it down. All right, so that was a very bad shot off my hand. Uh, very slow, but as you can see, it very does a very good job of blending out the dry. I'll take that as a miss all day, especially on house. So kind of how I drilled this one, I did drill the origin the same way, which you'll see in our next video. Um, I feel like I have a lot of, uh, a lot of big stuff um, that I can loop the lane with if I need to. I don't really have a ton of bigger stuff that I can kind of trap it and stay on top of it longer. Um, the guys that bowl a lot of tournaments, you kind of want to keep your, your big cores in your hands as long as possible because uh, they're going to get through the pins a little bit better. So I wanted a couple of balls here that were going to be bigger core balls that were gonna allow me to stay right a little bit longer. And this is what this ball is doing. So I'm gonna go back uh, two and one right here. And get right back to where I was striking a ton before. So I don't know if this is quite gonna be the piece that's gonna allow me to get left and circle it as much as the original intention star is, um, but that's perfectly fine because I didn't need something to do that. All right, I'm just going to try and throw this one better. So yeah, as Josh was saying, I also agree with this isn't going to be my ball when I get left. It's going to have a, it is going to have an end point. Um, 
I think there's enough difference in the covers between the S2 and the original Attention Star. Uh, my Attention Star I laid out very strong. It's 4x4x4, four by four by four, so it's strong all the way through my layout. Um, and my intention with that was to allow me to move left and use the maximum dry part of the lane um, to get it to slow down and go through the pins, which it's been a money maker for me doing that. So I'm going to go now to the original Attention Star. Um, like I said, this has got a little bit, uh, a little bit weaker of a pin placement, so it's going to flare a little bit less for me. Um, and this one's going to stand up and go forward a little bit faster. Uh, it does have pretty similar service wise. That I had a 2000 pad on it with about five to six games of lane shine. Um, so I'll just go right back to that last shot there where I struck. And I think you're going to see this one get offline a little bit faster than the S2. Uh, that one actually, it was a little bit further right, but you saw it. It actually scooted through that front part of the lane a little bit easier than the S2. And then when it saw the friction, it got up and went, um, which is exactly what I would expect out of the differences between the covers and layouts. All right, so I'm going to go to the original now. Uh, like I said, this is quite a stronger layout for me. So I'm going to stay in the same spot. It's either going to go a little further down and miss it, or it's going to be quicker. And by quicker, I mean down lane quicker. So pretty much what I expected. Cleaner, but it's going to go for me a little too far. So the next shot, I'll just go a little zone, half a zone right. And that should dial that right in. All right, so we'll go one more from straighter there, and I'll try to not get it going as far right as that last shot. That one, right where I wanted it, uh, and was definitely visibly cleaner for me. It almost looked like it hooked twice. I could see it. See the friction in the front part of the lane kind of straighten out, and then again down lane get going, which is exactly what I expected out of that one compared to the S2. All right, I'm going to creep half a zone back. That's probably three right. I'm going to use the same shape. I want one too many. <laughs> so this is a good lesson in the difference in covers where I'm using a weaker cover, you know, quote unquote weaker cover between the two balls with a stronger layout. Uh, but the strong, you know, the cover is probably the most important factor in getting the ball down the lane to do what you want. Layout's going to help, but it's only going to help us, you know, maybe 15, 20% of that is affected by the layout. So I'll go ahead and jump three left where I wrap the last 10 pin with the S2 and get around this one a little bit more. So yeah, that one definitely more forward um, and the S2 from there where that one kind of almost struggled to get back up the hill. The, uh, the S2 was able to slow down enough to at least wrap the 10 pin from there. All right, I'm going to make that one left off the last shot. So, yeah, up the lane. 
I mean, this is just a good example of what ball I would be choosing right now. Uh, I think it's pretty clear. I feel like I can strike pretty confident with that S2 once I get lined up. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I think we're both kind of big fan of what we've seen out of these ball or the S2s uh, right out of the box, at least. I mean, for me, it's it's going to be probably a go-to league ball for a good chunk mm -hmm. of the season until something else uh, comes out. Here in this house, it's been tough for me to score unless I can find something that allows me to stay kind of in that funnel longer, and that was the ball that allowed me to do that for a long time on Monday. So if you guys are interested, head over to your local store and VIP Pro Shop and pre-order your own uh, for the 22nd release date.